All right. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center here in the heartbeat of heaven, Dallas, Texas. And we thank God for all of you that are joining us in this live broadcast. This is part two of November kickoff, blast off, November infusion. Amen. For this is the final month of autumn. And it is the final month and the greatest month of harvest. Everybody say harvest. Harvest, harvest is here. And it's on full blast, if you can believe it. In simulcast, God is moving, God is doing, God is about, amen, bringing it large. Everybody, every, I told someone today, say, uh, I roll with God because God rolls. He really rolls. When he rolls, he rolls. I roll with God. Amen. So a lot of you people that don't believe in prosperity, don't believe in uh, God uh, abundance, and don't believe in, in all those things. Listen, my God rolls. He's got wheels, and man, he, when he moves, he moves. And there's major things that happen in the planet, can you say, in the, un in the universe. Glory to God. And I like what it says. We're going to start out in Deuteronomy verse 3. He will restore you from captivity. Everybody say, he is delivering me from captivity. He will restore you from captivity and have compassion on you. Everybody say, God's having compassion on me in the month of November. Hallelujah. Amen. And what does that mean when you're, when you're, when you're out of bondage, when you've been set free? And when you're a captive, you know what you do? Job 8, 20. He will fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Fill your mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 Hallelujah. And your lips with shout for joy. Glory to God. You're set free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And God, in this season, in God's dealing with me, Psalm 85, 1, you showed favor to the land. Favor to the land, O oh Lord. We call this in for the whole of the United States. Can you say favor from coast to coast? Favor from coast to coast. Psalm 85, 1, you showed favor to your land, O oh Lord. You restored Jacob from captivity. Everybody say God restored Jacob. Jacob is covenant. God restored Jacob from captivity. Everybody say, I'm no, no longer locked in. Into bars, into cages, into gates. I am no longer shut in. But I have breakout, clout, and there is no doubt. God is bringing it about. Woo, glory to God. He's bringing it about. Hallelujah. He's about. And, you know, and the thing about it is, and the Lord showed me, there's so many people feel like that, you know, that, uh, you know they've fallen off the edge or, you know, or they're at the edge or they, fall, they feel like that, you know, they're limited. And they're looking at their finances. They're looking at their bills. And they're looking at monthly due dates. And uh, they're looking at a lot of things. And their, their, their mind circulates and runs around and says, how am I going to make it? How, how is it going to happen? Somebody might have made a new acquisition. And they're wondering how they're going to make those payments. Hello. But, but, you know, when we get into that, it's like getting into a rat race, isn't it? It's like the, it's like the nine to five crowd out there running in the rat race, just trying to make it work, trying to make it happen, trying to make ends meet. How many know Jesus said not to take any thought? Do not take any thought. Your father knows that you have need of these things. Hallelujah. But he said in Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What are those little things I used to play years ago? I love them. You know, can you hear them? Just up the keys. And hear that. Can you hear those xylophone uh, waves just circulating like you hold up that, uh, uh, that shell, seashell in your ear? Just... just Put your hand up to your ear and just hear those xylophone little da 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 hear that xylophone hear the xylophone xylophone yeah hallelujah I mean 
you get into God's grid and you get into God's glory and you get into God's power and you get into God's motion and you get into God's uh, flow and you get into God's dynamic, you're not going to be down here counting. You're not going to be down here keeping track of your budget. You're not going to be down here thinking about all your bills. You're not going to be down here thinking about how flat your life is financially. Can you say amen? amen. My God, when you get with God, he owns it all. He's eternity. God's eternally rich. He owns universes. He controls universes. He put every star in place. and He knows every star's name. He keeps them in orbit. Everyone keeps their place. God is that big. Everybody say, my God is large. Hallelujah. You know, Isaiah got excited in Isaiah 40, uh, 14, verse 7. He said, all the earth is at peace and at rest. All the earth is at peace and at rest. They break out in song. They break out in song. They break out. Look at that. Peace, rest, and breaking out in song. Peace, rest, and breaking out in song. You know, that wasn't a natural thing for Isaiah to say, Isaiah got caught up in the Holy Ghost. He got caught up in kingdom consequence. He, caught, he, he, he got caught up in kingdom revelation. Hello. You can't hold your peace. You can't hold your place in the natural world and think about limitation, loss, and liability when you get caught up in God's restoration. Can you say? When God brings breakout. When God brings strategies, amen, and fills your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy, amen. And we're in that season, Deuteronomy 30, verse 3 again. He will restore you from captivity and proclivity and have compassion on you. He restored Jacob from captivity, Psalm 85, 1. My God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you get caught up in the spirit, you're going to get your harvest. If you allow God to catch you up in the spirit, you're going to get your harvest. If you allow God to take you up in the Holy Ghost, you're going to get your harvest. If you get stirred in God, you're going to get your harvest. you got to get in that jet stream with God. That's where the harvest is. The jet stream in God's move, in God's power, in God's animation. In God's elevation, in God's celebration, that's where the harvest is. You know, Hosea 6.11, also for you, O Judah, a harvest is appointed. Also for you, O Judah, a harvest is appointed. Judah was a tribe of praise and worship. Judah was a, a tribe that excelled in praise and worship to God. Also for you, O Judah, a harvest is appointed when I restore my people from captivity. When I restore my people from captivity. Everybody say, restoration is on. Celebrations is on. Amen. God's bringing us out of captivity financially. Listen, if you, have, if you haven't come out of Egypt loaded, you haven't come out of Egypt yet. If you haven't come out of Egypt absolutely slap loaded, you haven't come out of you haven't come out of Egypt yet. Because the system listen, the system still owns you financially. The system still controls you financially. The banks still control you financially. How do, so don't sit down and say, I don't have any work to do. I've been set free and everything's fine. And look around and you look around at your bank notes and you look around fundamentally at Christmas and you're looking at say, what can I buy for Christmas and what can I not buy for Christmas and how much money do I have in hand and how much do I have money in my cookie jar? Hello. How much money do I have under my mattress? And, you know, just making ends meet and barely making it and just barely getting by. That's not way, the way God is. You're coming out loaded. Can you say amen? You're going to get those bills paid for. You're going to get those mortgages paid off. Everybody say pay off. Come on, you're going to get those bank notes paid off. Say pay off. Amen. You're going to get those credit cards paid off. Everybody say paid off. Hallelujah. Say debt has made its way off my life. I am debt free. I am a debt free. I'm the debt free 
pedigree. Say it again. I'm the debt free pedigree. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say, I'm God's class pet. I'm God's class pet. Hallelujah. I'm God's class pet, and it's okay for me to drive a vet. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, God said in Ephesians 3.20, I had not seen or ear heard. Let me just, let me pull it up. Pull up Ephesians. Pull up Ephesians 3 and 20. I like to hear what God says about everything. Can you say amen? Uh, let me just pull it up. I think I'm going to pull it up in the amplified version here. Get you. In the, I'm going to amp it up. Everybody say amp it up. Amp it up. We're going to amp it up. Amp it, up. it says on, in Ephesians 3, 20 and, and 21, it says, Now to him was able to carry out his purpose and do, look at this, super abundantly, more than all we dare ask or think. Look at this. Infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, <laughs> on, our greatest hopes, Infinite. infinitely beyond our wildest dreams, according to his power that as at work within us, to him be glory in the church in Christ Jesus throughout generations forever and ever. You know, I got a hold of this and, and I started thinking, wait, beyond my wildest dreams? Beyond my imagination, I've been thinking too small. I haven't been thinking large enough. So now, from now on, I say, God, bring it, but bring it according to your imagination. Bring it, but bring it according to your wild dreams. Can you say, bring it, but bring it according to your magnificent hope. Can you say amen? Bring it, but bring it with your infinite power beyond my ability to even pray that kind of a prayer bring it bring it lord bring it in that manner bring the unlimited bring the eternal bring me into that zone hallelujah where god lives where god loves where god lives where god anoints where god animates where god celebrates lord bring me into that wafting cloud of glory hallelujah infinite beyond anything i could even Talk about or imagine beyond my thoughts, beyond my reasoning. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Everybody say, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Sing it, sing it, sing it. My God in heaven. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. You know, I like Zechariah 8, 6. I talked to somebody this morning. He said, this is what the Lord of hosts says. This is the Lord of angel armies. I've been putting out videos about angels. If you go to Steve, Stephen Coya, C-O-I-A, Sterling. On YouTube, I put a video on there about angels just recently. I think this uh, two videos ago. Just go there and, and, and watch the whole thing. I'm putting another one out, Lord willing, in, in a couple of days. But Zechariah 8, 6 says, this is what the Lord of hosts or Lord of angel army says. If it's marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of the people in those days, should it also be marvelous in my eyes? Declares the Lord of hosts. In other words, just because it's marvelous to you, do you think that I'm impressed? Can any of your thoughts impress me, God says? No. Can any of your imaginations impress me, God says? Not really. No. Not really. It's not infinite. Like I'm infinite all the time. Yeah. Every day. 24 hours a day. God is infinite. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Amen. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. Uh, a Psalm 118 and 21, I will give you thanks for you have answered me. See, we need to just begin to give God some thanks. We need to give God something to work with. Just start giving him some praise. Just start giving him some honor. Amen. Start giving God some love. Everybody say, start giving God some love. Stop being a hater. Stop being a powder. Stop being a depressed person and start giving God some love. Can you say, just start giving God some of your love and thanksgiving. I will give you thanks for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone which the builders have rejected have become the cornerstone. This is from the Lord. It is marvelous or miraculous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and make him our choice and be glad in it. 
Lord, save us, we pray. We beseech thee, Lord. Cause us, make us to prosper. Make us to prosper. Hallelujah. We've chosen the Lord. We've chosen God. Moses left Egypt, forsaking all of Egypt, that he might suffer with the children of Israel because he knew that the reward he would receive was very great. Very great. Know that when you make a dedication, when you make a commitment, when you switch over and get all in and you really come forth with God and you say, God, I believe you for everything and I, and I know you are my everything and you begin to praise him and worship him and let salvation have its perfect work. Let salvation do what it wants to do. Everybody say, I'm going to let salvation do what it wants to do in my life, breaking all strange stress and strife. And that salvation is bringing it with all God could bring it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, the man of God, man of God prays in Psalm 53, 6. He says, oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. When God bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Hallelujah. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Hallelujah. Salvation cometh out of Zion. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I love it. Hallelujah. It's amazing, isn't it? It's a theme. It's a, everybody say, it's a theme. It's a dream. And it has the right seams. It's a theme, it's a real dream, and it has the right seams. Hallelujah. And the Lord spoke to me today, say, my people have been robbed because they do not know that they really have a choice in life. They've been robbed. They've been filled with a bill of goods. Hallelujah. I was talking to somebody today. And the Lord began to deal with me about Ezra. And Ezra is a mighty man of God. And he was a wall builder. And Nehemiah, well, actually, Ezra was building, building the temple, rebuilding the temple. In Ezra 6.14, it says, The elders of the Jews builded. The elders of the Jews builded. They prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. They, look at that. Everybody say, prophes they prof they they. They prospered through the prophesying. Say it again. They prospered through the prophesying. Hallelujah. Did you know that the word of God is the spirit of Christ? It is, it's the spirit of prophecy. Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And when you get his word, you can actually prophesy your blessing into your life. The elders of the Jews building and they prophesied through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, Zechariah, the son of Edu. They builded and finished it. Everybody say finished. Jesus said it is finished. What did Jesus do? What did he tell Peter? You will build my church and the gates of Hades will not stop you. You will build my church and the gates of hell itself cannot stop you because Jesus said the work is done. It is finished. Look at that. And they prophesied through prophesying of the prophets and they built it and finished it according to the, to the word of the Lord God of Israel, according to the commandment. Look, look at this. And then not only did their prophesying become prolific, but also God commands here. And according to the commandment, of Cyrus, Darius, Artaxerxes, kings of Persia. According to the God of Israel. Let me read it. Let me read the full context now. And the elders of the Jews builded and prospered through prophesying. The prophesying of Haggai, the prophet Zechariah, the son of Idu. They builded and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel. And according to the commandment of Cyrus, Darius, Artaxerxes, and the king of Persia. God, they became so prolific at prophecy and they became so pro prolific at allowing it to build them up. God said, I'm able to build you up and give you an inheritance because my son has spoken to you. Can you say amen? Yeah. Glory to God. God's building us up now. 
He's releasing that inheritance because the son who owns it all is talking to us. Hallelujah. He owns it all. He controls it all. As was the Hebrews 2.8. There's nothing that's left out of control of the son of God. Nothing is left out of the control of the son of God. Woo! Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And I was thinking about that today, about, about those prophecies that God gave. And that was awesome. It was so awesome that it caused them to rise up and build the temple. God's prophecy has force. God's prophecy has power. Can you say amen? God's prophecy has ability in it that no human being has. And God can take you from where you are to where you want to go because he will prophesy to you. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm prophesying to you right now that November is going to be extraordinary month. November is going to be a breakout month. November is going to be a great harvest month. November is going to be your deliverance from captivity. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. The November is going to be your deliverance from captivity. Say it again. Say, no, November is going to be my deliverance from captivity. And say, just because I can't see it, doesn't mean it can't be it. Say it again. Say, just because I can't see it, doesn't mean that it can't be it. Can you say amen? Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody say, just because I don't know it, doesn't mean I can't own it. Say it again. Say, just because I don't know it, doesn't mean that I can't own it. Let me give you, let me, let's go back to 2 Kings 7 for a minute. I'm going to show you something here. Something that's going to re rearrange your focus, going to, going to reset your dial. It's going to help you throw a new switch. It's going to help you get going now. And you're going to believe God for so much during this month. Every day when you wake up, you are going to jump up and down for joy. Just waiting for new packages to be delivered. Just waiting for new events to take place you're gonna you're gonna see would you see this it's gonna just move you beyond degree in second king seven and one then elisha said hear the word of the lord this is what the lord says remember we talked about the prophets building people up about this time tomorrow at the gate of samaria a sea of fine flour will sell for a shekel two seas of barley will sell for a shekel but the officer, look at this now. The officer on whom the king leaned answered the man of God and said, watch this. This is carnal reasoning. This is unconverted. This is an unconverted mind. See, the unconverted mind is never going to believe what God's going to do, especially if it's extraordinary. Can you say amen? So don't think you're going to get anything from God if you're double-binded. Hello? I told you to get caught up in the jet stream, right? Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says about tomorrow at the gate of Samaria. A sea of flour will sell for a shekel and a sea, uh, two seas of barley will sell for a shekel. But the officer on whom, uh, on whose arm the king leaned answered the man of God, Look, even if the Lord were to make the windows of heaven open, could this really happen? You see, at this time... Israel was going through a famine. There was total wipeout in the land. No food to be gotten. Yeah, people dying, perishing, and passing away. So you've got here uh, four lepers sitting there dying with everybody else. Hello. Look, even if the Lord were to make the windows of heaven open, could this really happen? And look, look what the prophet says. You will see it with your own eyes. Yeah. But you will not eat any of it. Look at that. Don't fool with the prophet. Hello. Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. And they said one to another. 
And you see uh, who was leaning on the uh, king's arm was the gatekeeper, right? And, and, and the king was leaning on his arm. He was, he was looking at the natural environment. He was looking at things in the natural. He was looking at things, and he was, he was counting things, and he was keeping track of things in the natural. That's what the gatekeeper does. He was informing the king how bad the situation was. Hello! But God comes on the scene and moves the prophet to prophesy. And he said, things are going to change tomorrow. Things are going to change tomorrow. And I'm telling you, and I'm saying to you tonight, things are going to change tomorrow. Come on, things are going to change tomorrow. Hallelujah, no more famine. No more debt. No more bondage. Everybody say freedom. Liberty. Joy. Break out. Breakthrough. Deliverance. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So what happened? Well, let me take you down. Second Kings 7, let me take you down a few verses. Let me just walk you down here a little bit. Here yeah, we're going to read it uh, word for word, verse for verse. Um, in, in verse 4 it says, if we say we will enter the city, then famine is in the city. You know, the, the lepers are talking to each other. And famine's in the city. And we shall die there. And if we stay here, we're going to die anyway. Now therefore come and let us let us fall under the hosts of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall die. I mean, how many would agree that's a desperate situation? Yeah. Amen. In verse 5, And they rose in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. But when they came to the uttermost part of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no man there. <laughs> now here's, where the angel, here's where the angels of God come in. For the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear the noises of chariots and the noise of the horses. How many know that God works with chariots and horses? Wow. Just ask Elijah when he asked the servant Gehazi's eyes to be open. He saw that the Syrian army was surrounded by chariots of fire and horses of fire. Can you say amen? amen. So God just opened the ears of the Syrians and they, and they heard the commotion and the motion of God's angelic forces around them. Scared them out of their minds. The Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear the noise of the chariots, the noise of the horses, and the noise of the great host. The great host. Everybody say great hosts. My God, you cannot get this thing in the natural. You got to know that your God is up to something. You got to know that your God is on the move. You got to know that God is on track. You got to know that your God has power. You got to know that your God has executed uh, his will and he has great hosts that are working this thing out for you. Can you say amen? I mean, great hosts, great armies of God, angels of God, bands of, of God, bands of angels are working it out for you right now. Can you say praise the Lord? And they said one to another, the king of Israel hath hired us kings of the Hittites and kings of the Egyptians and, 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 and to come upon us. And wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight. <laughs> fled in the twilight. They fled in the, it wasn't even dark yet. They fled in the twilight. They left their tents. They left their horses. They left their ass. They left their Cadillacs. They left their Mercedes. Amen. They they left all of their fancy cars and doodads, even as a camp. Even the camp was as it was, and fled for their very life. Everybody say well transfer. Well transfer. Hallelujah. And when the leopards came to the uttermost parts of the camp, they went into one tent that they ate and they drank. Ooh, glory to God. They ate and they drank and carried their silver and gold and raiment and went out and hid it. Then they went back in again. And he said, "There's more for us." And they went to another tent and hence carried everything out of there. And they went and hid that. Hello. And they said one to another, we do not well. This is a day of good tidings. We hold our peace. If we tarry till morning light, 
some mischief will come, mischief will come upon us. Now that we're come, we must go tell the king's household. Here comes the good news to the king. Can you say amen? amen. The you know, the gatekeeper's giving him all the bad news. He doesn't even agree with the prophet. He thinks it's ridiculous. He thinks whatever God says out of his mouth won't work. It's impotent. It's not powerful. It doesn't have any consequence. Hello. Don't ever get a mindset like that when you start thinking in the natural, reasoning in the natural, and telling yourself what God can't do, and estimating that God is not who he says he is. Can you say, don't ever get a disposition like that. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, we, we came to the camp of the Syrians. Behold, there was no man there, neither the voice of man, not even a voice, but horses tied and asses tied and tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house within. And the king rose in the night, and his servants, I will now show what the Assyrians have done. They know that we be hungry, therefore they are gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. So they set a trap. They, the king thought that they just slept a little ways out of the city, so he was gonna, it was a trap. One of the servants answered, said, let, 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 let some take, I pray thee, five horses that remain, which are left in the city. Behold, they are all the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even as the multitudes of the Israelites that are consumed. Let us send and see. They took therefore two chariot horses, and the king sent after the host of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. Go and see. Isn't that just like Thomas? Go and see. Go and see. I got to see it first to believe it. Hello. They got to, that's like Christians are like that. I, they got to see it first to believe it. Why don't they just grab the word of God, pull the word of God in and say, let God be true and every man a liar. Can you say amen? And they went after them under the Jordan and lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians had thrown away in haste. My God, they ran after them and there was nothing but a line of spoils. They gathered all the spoils up. And the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley was sold for a shekel, according to the word that the Lord had spoken. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned. Watch this. The one that denied the prophet. The king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate. And the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. He was stampeded to death because he didn't believe the word of the prophet. The Bible says the word of God is life and death. It is a curse or a blessing. Choose who you want to believe. Choose what you want to receive. Can you say amen? Amen. Say Everybody say, we want the truth. We don't want the sleuth. But we want the absolute gospel truth. We want what God wants for us. Lord, be it unto us. According to your word. Be it unto us. According to your word. You know... There's another quick scripture here. Let's go to Acts chapter 12 real quick. Um, you know, we talk about angels all the times here lately. I've been talking about angels a lot. In verse 5 of, 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 of uh, chapter 12 of Acts, Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church of God for him. Verse, five, verse 6, and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, look at this, the angel of the Lord came upon him. A light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on his side, rousing him and waking him up, saying, Arise quickly. And as soon as he said that, the chains fell off his hands. 
And then verse 8, the angel said to him, Gird thyself and bind up thy sandals. So he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garments before thee, or wrap them around thee, and follow me, the angel said. Verse 9, And he went out and followed him. Wish not, look at this, Wish not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. He didn't even think he was, he was actually moving. He was actually, he thought he was having a vision. That's how close the similitudes are between the two worlds. Hello. And when angels show up on the scene, things slow down. Glory to God. And in here, he didn't even know that this was actually a life event. He thought it was taped. And it was a vision. He thought he saw a vision. But when they were past the first and second ward, they came into the iron gate. Everybody say iron gate. Iron gate. Which leadeth unto the city. Which opened to them of its own accord. The gates, iron gates is opened up by themselves. Iron gates, lock gates, just opened up by themselves. I see you coming out. Glory to God in November. Those gates, iron gates, those things that prevented you, installed you, stalemated you, those things that have kept you in bondage and kept you short and kept you in lack. I see those big iron gates opening up by God's mandated covenant angels. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Woo, hallelujah. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me. Delivered me. Delivered me. Everybody say, Delivered me. Woo, glory to God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Say, I've got deliverance. Say, I've got deliverance right now. The month of November has got me deliverance. Can you say amen? Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And you know what? Speaking of gates. You know, let's just, let's just jump over to uh, Micah. Uh, jump over to Micah. 2, 12, and 13. I'll read it from the NIV Bible. I surely will gather all of you, Jacob. I surely will bring you together, remnant of Israel. I mean, I know that God's bringing a remnant together. Uh, people that really believe they're God, they're going to do mighty exploits. You're not here by accident. You're not listening for no reason. God's bringing something together. I will surely gather you, O Jacob. I will surely bring together the remnant of Israel. I will bring them together in a sheep, like sheep in a pen, like a flock in the pasture. The place will throng with people. The place will will throng with people. And in another translation, it says, it'll be like a noisy throng, a noisy bunch. Whoo, glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean, when I got a revelation from God today and I start getting in that stream today and it start flowing, I'm on the phone at, at a bread, printer bread shop. I'm on that phone and I'm talking and I'm praising God and I'm shouting and I don't even know who's around me. Amen. And I'm giving God the glory and I'm in the flow. Everybody say, we're in the flow. And say, we're a noisy throng. We don't even care. Verse 13, the one who breaks open the gate will go up for them. The one who breaks open the gate will go up for them. Everybody say, the one who opens the gate is going forth for me. They will break through the gate and they will go out. Everybody say, I am breaking through the gate of confinement. I'm breaking through the gate that has defined me. I'm breaking through the gate that has limited me. I'm breaking through the gate that has cheated me. I'm breaking through the gate that has kept me limited in my life. Hallelujah. The one who breaks open the gate will go before them and they will break through the gate and they will go out. Their king will pass over before them. The Lord God will be at the head. Can you say amen? The Lord God will be at the head. Glory to God. Come, my God, I feel it in the spirit. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. I feel it in the word. My God, I feel it. I sense it. I say it. I prophesy it. I pray it. It's just amazing what God does and how he does it. 
Ooh, glory to God. And I'm going to tell you what. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Everybody say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Oh, my. I love this. I wanted to bring out one more scripture if I can find it real quick. Hallelujah. You got, got, everybody say, God's doing these things. You know, Genesis 18, 14 says, is anything too hard for the Lord? He told, he told Sarah, at the time appointed, I'll return according to the time of life, and you're going to have a son. His name's Laughter. You know, Jeremiah 32, 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too difficult for me? Just because it's difficult for us doesn't mean it's difficult for him. Hello? Jesus said, My yoke is what? Easy. My burden is light. Jeremiah 32, 17, O Lord God, you have made the heavens and earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing, Nothing is too difficult for <laughs> Everybody say, nothing is too difficult for him. Woo, glory to God. You know what? The degree of difficulties just ended. You were thinking that you've got to stay in the same condition. Same position. You're thinking you've got to stay the same mode in the same, same genre. You were thinking that it's got to be that way and it can never be any other way. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't have to be that way at all. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. It doesn't have to be that way at all. Hallelujah. Psalm 77, 13. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great as God is our God? Thou art God, and thou doest miracles. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people. The sons of Jacob and Joseph shall praise thee. Can you say amen? Woo, glory to God. God's got ways and means. Everybody say, God's got ways and means. Say it again. Say, God has ways, and he has means. God can do what we cannot do. God can make happen for us what could never happen for us in a million years. God is making a way where there seemeth to be no way. God is making a way where there seemeth to be no way. Ah, ha, ha. Hallelujah. God said, I'll not hide them from these, these children. I'll show these things from generation to generation. And he said, I'll show you my praises. I'll show you my strength. I'll show you my wonderful works. Just as I have done, I shall do, saith the Lord. Psalm 78, 4. God has never, everybody say, God has never lost his luster. Everybody say, God is not in filibuster. Woo, hallelujah. All right, my last, my last scripture, Psalm 78, 65. Then the Lord awakened out of his sleep like a mighty man that shouteth by reason of wine. I know when some wine can make you feel good, especially after you slept a little while. And he smote the enemies in the hinder parts, and he put them into perpetual reproach. God spoke to me and said, some of us have been walking in shame. We've been walking under judgment. We've been walking, uh, and, and, and we felt, you know, like that our lives are just disheveled and disturbed, and we feel so embarrassed, and, and we feel so out of it. God said, I'm going to break the enemies. I'm going to rouse myself. And I'm going to put the enemies that put you in shame and reproach, I'm going to turn the tables on them, and I'm going to put it back on them. Can you say amen? I'm going to put it right back on them and break you out with clout so there'll never be any doubt that God is moving about. Hallelujah. Give the Lord another hearty hand clap and say amen. Woo, glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, there you have it. There you have it. It's a 10 to 9, but he is divine, on his shine, one of a kind. And we have a gold mine. And it is sublime. And it's refined. Just watch out now. This is dangerous. 
this is so dangerous, it'll just, it'll make a daffodil wilt just thinking about it. I'm telling you right, this thing has been set in motion now. It's released. Father God, we lift our hearts and hands to heaven right now. We thank you for what you're doing, what you've done, what you're about to do. month of November I mean in the month of November it is going to be a climactic month it is going to be a, a a double harvest blue moon month glory to God is amped up amped up amped up in major ways and God's making major plays how they break it through the fray and making life pay in Jesus name in every way my God God, I feel that in Jesus' name. Well, this is Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center. Thank you for joining us, tuning in, for listening. Thank you. Let God glistening be glistening to you now. Let God just take you over. For not, you're not going to go under for going over now. Uh, there you go. There you have it. In Jesus' name. God bless. God's very best. Click the like button. Click the share button. We will talk to you again real, real soon. Bye-bye for now.